Oh, hey there. My name's David. On this episode, I'm gonna be taking you through some backpack customization ideas that I've done. Now I'm building myself out, my whole life out to be an adventure filmmaker, diving in headfirst into this. And to do this, I wanna be absolutely optimized in every aspect of this. Cause I've been doing this now for two years, but it's been kind of on and off and just kind of dipping my toes in the water. And I found when you're hiking, whether it's adventure filmmaking or you're just hiking in general, you're always reaching for things. You're like, ah, where's that thing? And you're trying to turn your pack around and get that ob object out of the bag while everyone's hiking ahead and you've got to quickly catch up. You're like, hey guys, give me a minute. I got to dig through my bag and find that thing. And you, you always wish you had something on the side of your bag. It was easily accessible, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so first off, my bag is a 3F UL 55 liter bag. It's 2.3 pounds, so it's really light. It holds a lot, you can see it is quite large. That's good and bad because it doesn't have any compartments on the inside. So often you have to kind of organize stuff with little bags or something or just jam it all in there, which gets a little annoying. So the only thing I have going on here, you can see there's one carabiner right where my hand is and that is hooked onto the metal stay. And this allows me to hook my keys on here because there is nothing to hold my keys. And after a long hike, I want to know where my keys are. <laughs> so that's the only thing I've customized on the inside so far. Now for the outside, that's where it all happens because as an adventure filmmaker, I need everything accessible. What I've got here is these bags are 20 bucks. They're a little, well, maybe 18 bucks. They're a little bit expensive. That's Canadian, so what is it, about two or three dollars US. And uh, so I've attached these to the hip belt. So my hip belt is here and I have them pointing outward. So I've got bear spray and I've got my uh, snacks attached there because there's a bit of a bungee thing on here. And I'll link up all this stuff um, below, I have a uh, account with Lighter Pack, which shows the weight of stuff and also has links to everything. So I'll show all my gear. So if you want to use the same sort of stuff, it'll all be linked. Um, I've got an 18 millimeter f2.8 Samyang lens here. This lens is fantastic and it's incredibly light. It's probably one of the lightest lenses created, but it looks great and it's wide angle. So for any for sort of specialized wide angle shots, whether you got have a huge vista and there's just too much to, to capture, um, my normal lens now is a 24 to 105 Sony lens. So it maxed out at 24 mil and sometimes you just need more. And eight, that's what 18 mil comes in. I have that on this side and you can see here the, uh, the buckle. So this is where this clips together. And I'll put this on for you afterwards so you can see. But, and then once again, this has another pouch here I can put in some more snacks. So I have two snack pouches right on my hip belt that's easily accessible. Now this bag often, like other bags, have hip pockets. So I keep, you know, a few things in there. There's just some more s snacks in there that are a little bit bigger. On this side, I have a, a secondary camera, which is my Osmo Pocket 2. And that one's great because it has a gimbal that rotates and I can set it to do moving time lapses, which is really hard to do with a big boy camera like my Sony here. You need an actual special rig to do that, which I'm not gonna carry into the woods. So on my shoulder here, I have a one of those peak design clips, except it's not peak design, it's called Hulas, which was only, like, I think it was 20 or 30 bucks or something, as opposed to the 80 or $90 peak design ones. I've been using this for a while. It, it doesn't seem like it's gonna break, even though it's a cheaper brand, so pretty happy with that. And that allows me just to hook my camera here and I can have it on my shoulder. On this side, you can see I have my action camera, which is an Osmo Action 1. And that is on a bracket that can, can fold down. You can see here, I can fold it so if I'm climbing something really steep, I can point it up. I can point it down if I want to look over something or whatever. It has a ball joint on it too, so you can rotate it sideways, or I can rotate it back in my own face. So it's fantastic. When I'm hiking, I can keep it down and out of the way. On the top, you can see there's another bracket that comes with this thing. Now this is a Teleson, and it's a, it's a Velcro that slides over the, the strap itself, and then that has a second bracket. I think it's meant for a selfie stick handle, but I just flip this thing upside down and then I can use another uh, clip on there. I still have to figure this out, but basically I have an Osmo pocket clip, which is a small camera to go on there, but it doesn't have a, a thing to screw in on the other side. So to fix that, I'm going to have to get a nut. I forget the, the size, like a size eight or something. I remember it's an eight millimeter width screw. So you can just get a screw and put that on there. I'll be doing that today. And that allows me to put my Osmo Pocket 2 on my shoulder, which is a stabilized little camera. So if this camera dies, I have this one. And also, potentially I want a situation where I want to film myself and forward, and I have to have my hands free so I can't use my, my Sony, then I could have both those cameras going without um, needing my hands. One thing to note too is this Teleson thing slides down because it's a Velcro, it doesn't clamp. So I've used some uh, shock cord 
to tie through there onto one of these buckles so it cannot slide down. So it is permanently stuck there unless the shock cord gets cut. And even then it would only slowly start to slide down. So from there I've got uh, my knife. Now I've been back and forth with the knife, but I end up doing more and more solo trips. And so I want my knife accessible and not a big Rambo knife or not my tiny knife. I have one of those tiny uh, Gerber LST, but this one is a uh, more of Mora, what's it called? Mora Companion. Pretty big, sharp knife, but it's really light. I have it in between the hip pocket and the hip strap. There's a hole there and I was able to just clip it onto there and it stays in there. So I lose a little bit of pocket space on my right hip belt, but I get my knife. So now I've got bear spray on the left, knife on the right. So I always know where which one's which, because you never know. Like if a cougar is running towards you and you don't have a few seconds to get that bear spray in action, I'd rather just grab the knife and pull it up. And you know, a cougar wants to jump on me with a huge blade sticking out, so be it, let's go. Boom, boom, boom. So if you have a few more seconds, you know, pop out the bear spray. The bear spray, this little bag I have has a, uh, is a bungee cable on it here. And so I actually just snap that over top. It's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. Look at that. It just snaps over top and it holds this clip so it can't pop off and accidentally spray myself. Now the final thing here, which is not done, but I'm just showing you a few things that are completed and few things in progress. Now I'll see by the metrics of this video if anyone is interested in all this, it's a bit of a test because I spent a lot of time doing this stuff, maximizing, optimizing, so I can just be more and more effective and uh, be able to film more videos and you know not miss out on stuff. So what I've done here is I've taken one of these, I don't know what they're called, they're really hard to look them up, but I got these in Hong Kong when I was there a long time ago and they're just these waist belts that you put on and you can, they're stretchy, the zippers. And this one just happens to have two. One's a small one and one's a bigger one. And so I've just clipped it onto my bag here temporarily. So if you're gonna cu customize stuff, this is what I do. I kind of just, I test it out with stuff that I have. And now that I've got a sewing machine and I know how to use it, I'm like, oh, I could just sew that on there. And it's really opened up ideas. So now I'm looking at this and this one is pretty big. And this lens, I need access to this. This is my uh, 2.5 to 5X, uh, 2.8, 25 mil. This is a super macro lens. There's only lens on earth that shoots stuff like this. And it just gets really unique shots, but I want to have it accessible. It doesn't need to be like wham bang, <laughs> there's the lens, but it needs to be, you know, I don't want to dig through my pack because I probably use this two or three times on an entire hike, but it just gives these unique shots. So you can see that actually would fit in this bag. Now, where can I put this? And what I do is I found this strap here. So this one connects on the side. And if I put this along this strap, like that, I could just sew that on there, cut these ends off, and then suddenly I have a pouch right there. Okay, so you can see I got my pack on here and I've got this pouch here. So now I'm looking at this. And so if I, if I take this, I find that one pouch that I was looking at, this guy, and I just pinch it up there and pull it down there and then maybe, where does that fit? Like right there. And so what I'll do sometimes is take a, a clip and just clip it on there. And you can take it down there. It's obviously much easier if you have someone to help you. But see, now I've got it in here. I'm like, oh, okay. And then you can kind of test it out. Like, what's it like to have a, a pocket right there? Does that, does that feel good? And that's actually not bad at all. I wish there was, you know, built-in little pockets there. So I might add this one in here. The thing I've noticed is if I try to put this lens in there, see, it's easy enough. It's not the fastest accessibility, but it's not bad. The problem I found with this lens is sitting here is it's, it's right in my arm kind of, it kind of rubs. So if you want to put just a snack bar there or something, that would work. But for a lens, it's a little bit much. At that point, like it's getting in my way if you don't want to use my arm. Um, so this pocket is actually a good idea, but maybe just for smaller things. And all you have to do is sew the back end of this onto there and you'd be done. Now, if you want to carry something heavier, like much bigger like this, this is my drone and all the batteries and all that. I saw someone do this and it's incredible. You just hook it onto the other side with a carabiner on the back. It just sits like a saddlebag. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, and it doesn't feel, you know, out of place. And then once the camera that's filming this is on this side, you know, the weight's a little bit, there's a little more on my hip here, but I, I try to just load this side a little bit heavier and potentially my bag a little bit heavier on that side to counteract the weight of this thing. And, you know, it's pretty good. Now, so for this strap, you can see there's a little dongly thing here that attaches the camera and that just hooks onto 
there, and that's it. Now I don't want to let go of this because it's just being held by these two brackets, but basically I can have my camera rest here and get up for easy shots, and if you pull this tight, it creates stabilization. And you can just take this bracket off by pushing it in, sliding it out like that, and now I could potentially hook this onto another part if I want to store this here. And this can be used for anything, not just a camera. Like if I wanted to attach my bear spray onto here, you know, you could hook it on there and then have it just hook inside here or attach or something if you wanted to have bear spray, like quick access. And what I realized though is I don't need this cuff strap that I'm, you know, temporarily having with these things on here. I don't need this cuff strap to be here. All I need is this buckle. So what I'm going to be doing is buying these buckles and I'll link these up down below because all you need to do, especially since now I have a sewing machine, is have this put the buckle there, take this strap, feed it through the buckle on itself like this, so you got a hoop, put the buckle there and then just sew that and then I'll have the buckle permanently at attached to my load lifter. So it's really kind of opened up a lot of ideas because I'm probably going to take another one of these buckles and attach it to this strap, it's always laying here, and see what I like more, do I like this here or here? I can also have the camera hanging here which kind of changes the weight so I'm not always carrying it on one side. So that's really got me thinking too, like with a sewing machine I can sew anything to any of these straps and put pouches, you know, like this thing. Do I want to put that there? Do I want to cut off this other one that's small and like attach it, you know, on this, on this buckle, on this uh, waist belt. So there's a lot of options. I could attach one over here too. Essentially it's kind of endless what the possibilities you can kind of do. But so hopefully my customization of my pack with my adventure filmmaking gives you some ideas of how you, you would potentially want to customize your pack. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe. I've got a lot of adventure videos, obviously, on my channel you want to check out. And until next one, have a great day.